we booked a trip to Ireland and accidentally booked it over St. Patrick's Day. Happiest little accident ever. We had two options. We knew we were gonna be in Dublin and we knew we were gonna be in the countryside. What to do? Should we have St. Patrick's Day in Dublin or St. Patrick's Day in a quaint little town in the countryside? <laughs> so what did we end up doing? <laughs> countryside. We ended up staying in Dingle Peninsula, which is in the very west part of Ireland. On the west side of Ireland, there's like little doobies that come in and out, <laughs> little bits of land, little peninsulas, I guess is what those little doobies are called. Dingle is the dingle that dingles the furthest. It's the peninsula that sticks out the furthest. And there are multiple little villages and towns on Dingle Peninsula. There were going to be a couple parades we heard about. The little town of Bali Ferreter had a little parade at 11 in the morning. Got the kids up, got them dressed in their cozies, and we pulled into this little tiny village right before the parade started. As we were coming up, Ben talked to one of the people directing traffic, and he's like, well, welcome to the smallest parade in the world. You don't understand. We're here for that kind of energy. I always used to say about Paige that half the town is in the parade and the other half is watching the parade. In the United States, we all were required to learn the recorder. In my school, we also did the ukulele. But in Ireland, their recorder and their ukulele is a little fife whistle and the accordion. And once we were done with the Bali Ferreter Parade, we knew we had to run over to get to the larger Dingle Parade. So we hurried up and hopped in our car and we went on the tiny little roads and we drove the 20 kilometers to Dingle. On the road, when you're supposed to slow down, it says slow, but it also says Malgo, which is slow in Irish Gaelic. On the way to Dingle, we got caught behind Pat Hannafin in a septic tank. He was going very slow, but then we realized that Pat Hannafin in a septic tank was caught behind someone on a bike and somehow on the tiniest road in the world that felt very Irish. A lot more people were here at Dingle because it was it's the biggest town in the area. We were squashed right in between a couple Irish families and it was so cute seeing them recognize everyone in the parade. They're like, oh, it's Claire, look, it's Claire. And they were so excited. It was fun to see the very intense community feel that was in this town and in the whole island. Wait, what did you say? <laughs> we're waiting for the parade. We're the waiting for the parade. The girls got balloons. <laughs> All of your weight of your entire body is on this. Ice cream, Daddy. Daddy, you got ice cream too. Daddy. She's like dancing in her feet. Hi.
Do you think they put an animal on the back? I think there's a penguin in there? Oh, there is a penguin in there. I was joking. Yeah. Fire rescue had the third pickup truck that I had seen in the entire country. And weirdly enough, there are no minivans that I saw in Ireland, right? So we were driving from Dublin and Blair and I saw a pickup truck and we were like, what, it's a truck? Like it felt so out of place to see it. And then we saw one other one as like a work truck for a farm. And then we saw this fire and rescue one and literally no others. At some point it dawned on me that I had not seen one minivan, not one, not even a whisper of a minivan, no Suburbans, Nothing that I can imagine would house a family bigger than five. Over. We got to see it twice as it rounded the bend. Lanai went to the Dingle Surf Shop and she got a Roxy hat because she now thinks that she's gonna be a surfer one day. She figured out that her name Lanai is Hawaiian and the reason why is because I wanted to be a surfer when I was older. So now she has taken that upon her, which is the cutest thing ever. And she'll go in our garage and stand on our boogie board and do gymnastics moves and say that she's surfing. So she got this Roxy hat. Then I went to the Dingle Bookstore. Again, these are all things that I had researched and listened to podcasts about and heard so much about and then to actually do it, I was just so excited. In the Dingle bookstore, there was a whole section of kids books that were in Irish Gaelic and it was just so cute. Even Harry Potter in Irish Gaelic. Our way back to the car to put some stuff in the car, like namely our balloons that rattled around in the back of our trunk, we tried to escape every time we opened the trunk the rest of the trip. We, at the main square where there's Spongy the Dolphin, we saw Irish step dancers doing a little routine. That night, I got to fulfill my dreams of listening to pub music. We walked past the Dingle Pub and a sign was out that said that at three o'clock, there would be a trad and ballad session going on. The so trad is like when you have traditional Irish folk instruments that just play. And then ballads are when they play music and sing traditional Irish, either a sad love story ballad or like a rousing wartime ballad. And this band, what is their name? They were so good. They were like better than I expected and they were so young. It was like these young 17 year olds, they were probably older, but they I'm so old now that they look 17, that played so good and they knew a plethora of songs. High Tide. So we went into the pub and you kind of seat yourself there. That was, I didn't really know pub etiquette, but I knew that kids were allowed in there up until 9 p.m. And I was nervous because at first our kids were the only kids, but it was St. Patrick's Day and that pub was at four o'clock in the afternoon packed. 
but it's cool because we were there to enjoy the music and to eat a little bit while we were at it and we were never pressured to get up and leave early in fact Ben and Blair left to go get pizza or ice cream, I can't remember, and we just stayed and ate our food. We listened to music for hours, just listening to the music and taking in the ambiance, and no one pressured us to leave. The pub had such a cozy, familiar feel. Over here were six girls playing card games while they drank their beer. Over here was a whole family, grandpa, grandkids, mom, all around a table talking and laughing. Over there was a big, loud bachelorette party group, and then there was us. The room was tucked in really close and tiny, and sharing chairs, just squeezing into all the little spaces. Just the sound of it, clinking of the glasses, and conversation and music. It just was so cozy. It was exactly what I had expected it to be. I heard a song and I started singing along without realizing I was singing along. This isn't an Irish song. This is Riptide by Vance Joy. But it was really cute too because they also played Take It Easy by the Eagles, which is one of Ben's favorite songs and it always reminds me of my dad. We were in an Irish pub, but still it felt like this familiar connection. <laughs> But I did hear two songs that I wouldn't have recognized had I not done my preparation. The songs I did end up hearing were Galway Shawl. When they started playing it, there was this old man in the corner with his little cap and he was with his whole family and he started singing along too. And it was just really sweet to see how ingrained this music is into people of older ages, but also the younger generation, it's like a part of them too. Other one that I was so excited to hear in the flesh was Black and Tans. So Black and Tans is a the Irish rebel song when the British tried to take over Ireland and their military force was called Black and Tans. And so it's kind of like a come at me bro song. They're pretty ballsy. in the pub was singing it and it was really cool. Blake really liked the music too, surprisingly a lot, and it made sense. He said later, what did he say? He said, my mind is so busy and it was so loud that I felt calm there. Just put his head on my shoulder and when I snuggled up to me and we just sat there for an hour listening to the music and it was maybe my favorite moment, one of my favorite moments of the whole trip. As I was sitting there, a lady came up to me and she tapped me on the shoulder and I was like, mm. I thought I'd done something wrong. She was like, I just have to tell you, you have the most beautiful children I've ever seen. I almost cried. <laughs> it was just a beautiful moment in this pub, in this place that I anticipated for so long. And then I ended the night going on a walk around the most perfect trails in Dunquin. And I don't have footage of that night, but here's some footage that I took the very first night that we landed in Dingle. Blake and I immediately dashed off to go on a hike and explore around Dunquin. From our little cottage, you could see the ocean. That's how close we were to it. It was just a matter of figuring out what tiny little farm lanes past tiny little cottages and sheep it would take to get to the ocean. Our cottage is right there, but I'm gonna head this way. Oh. It's a slug. <gasps> that one's a slug, but that one's a snail. You are beautiful. Got it. Okay, we're gonna keep going. I was not prepared for how good this place, the dirt here is gonna smell. For mere moments, I forgot that I have pica and crave dirt until I smelt whatever this is. Oh. Looking at you. Can you do it? That sounds like a pigeon. Now do the crow. He was. 
Rounding the corner, and what did we see? Oh my god! Of all the money that ever I spent, I spent. And then after we were done with our hike, we headed back and it was the cutest view to come home to. To a beautiful sunset and a little tiny cottage with golden light coming through every single window. And inside the windows was Blair and Ben brewing up a cute little Irish potato dinner. There they are in the house. ending to a perfect day. Oh, that's